guys, it's Survivor Gaming, where our motto is, good gaming gone bad. And welcome back to Arcade Spirits. Now, when we last left off, we had just finished talk, we just got to talking to Naomi. Ah! Oh, um, hello? Hi. Hey, uh, you know this room is for employees only. I am an employee, my dear. She said with no apostrophe. Are, are you lost? Do, do you need something? I work here. I'm Albert McField I'm the new floor attendant. Starting today. <gasps> oh! Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I didn't realize Francine already found someone. Yeah. Hi. Hi! <laughs> I love her. I guess I forgot to check my text. <laughs> uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> you are a sweet being and must be protected at all costs. She sparks a glance at her phone on the nearby workbench where a huge stack of green notification messages lie in wait. Uh, uh, um. You okay? One thought comes to mind on actually seeing her. No wonder I didn't notice her until now. She was totally focused on the task at hand. I love to see her arcade news world from Fat and the Lies Guys. Oh my god, she's so cute. I just want to hug her. But that would be super inappropriate. Yes. Oh my god, she is so cute. I just want to hug her. But she would uh, be super inappropriate. No wonder I didn't notice her until now. She was totally focused on her task at hand. The stream was right at the heart of the building, but totally isolated. With the heavy door closed behind me, I can barely hear the arcade. Considering, considering how completely utterly and desolate she was to that monitor, not even noticing me, I guess that's also why. But what I first noticed was her smile. Even when squinting with a tiny component on that circuit board, even when laser focused, she was smiling happily. Uh, anyway... I'm Naomi Fairchild, the Fun Flexes Techie! Hi! <laughs> Pleased to meet you. I was expecting Gavin, though. He usually checks up on me about now. He's working. You've hit my paperwork down. He's busy doing strange things with numbers. Ugh. Yeah, that sounds like Gavin. <laughs> you are sweet boy. I take it he sent you along to help? Great! Uh, give me a hand with this monitor. It's really heavy, and I'm still paranoid about dropping it after what happened last time. Of course! Really? What happened last time? Thank you! What happened last time? Oh, well, I... I dropped it. <laughs> ah, I was like, oh, well, I, uh... Ah, I dropped it. Oh, right. She helped... She helps me with the large cars, uh, cathode, cathode ray tube, sliding the heavy metal uh, framework into place within the exposed guts of the nearby arcade cabinet. Once done, she starts hooking wires back up to, an, to other wires. There's a surprising number uh, of green circuit boards that are largely hollow wooden shell. This is the first time I've ever I've seen inside one of those things. It's weird. Lots of empty space, a couple of large slabs of uh, circuits, and that beefy monitor. <laughs> Why is it so empty in there? Maybe we can fill it with nacho dip. This is the first time seeing the guts of this game. I don't think that counts because these are her babies and she's getting really upset with me. So I'm just gonna say it's my first time seeing the game guts of game. I'll admit I don't know much of anything about uh, how arcade games tick. I figured it was packed full of circuits and things. The Navy keeps working using pocket multimeter to check various connections as she speaks. It could be packing tighter, like a bear top, like a bar top or a cocktail cab. I'd say Upright's favorite form over functionality. Let me explain. I mean, compare American Japanese cabinets. Our designs for standard players so that they have to be upright, even if it means an empty base. Japanese candy cabs are shorter, so you place them down, but I prefer American style. Ours have more room for art. She closed up the rear access panel, uh, closing it, and with one of many keys on the key ring on her side, and steps back to admire her handiwork. There's genuine joy in that smile, not just in the job well done, but looking at the whole thing. It's like a fine sculpture. So beautiful. Oh, I love the classic midway style. Look at those sharp angles, the side R decals, the bold font on the marquee, the bezel artwork. The what on the what and the what artwork? Well, the sign only points out the key features to me. A strip across the top of the game title, that's the marquee. Artwork that wraps around the monitor, that's the bezel. I mean, you see it too, right? How beautiful and cohesive it all is. Working in harmony to give the game its own unique feel, its own experience. As for me, well... So, so you're our resident game historian then. A bunch of weird looking boxes in a wall, in, in a row, look ugly. I agree, it's beautiful in its own way. 
I refuse to do that black star because that is a bitch move. That makes her say it. I agree, it's beautiful in its own way. The way she stares floating at it, well, honestly, this box of wooden and circuits and vacuum tubes and stuff. I think I understand. It was made to be one. It's made to be one whole thing: the art, the style, and the course of the game itself. All of it's part of the same experience. Everything about the game is the game. If you run it in an emulator or on a game console set, it's made lesser. Yeah, I guess I could see it. It's beautiful in its own way. Oh, good! Now you lights up with joy like a pinball machine, all twinkly and shiny. Woohoo! Finally, so people understand that the beauty of the classic arcade game, having someone I can talk about this stuff is going to be great. Especially with a jerk Gavin running the numbers. Gavin? What's wrong with Gavin? Uh, okay. I, I don't know. Well, don't get me wrong. I get along with him, generally, but his whole attitude just... Oh! Ugh. All he really cared about, all he really cares about is money. He keeps the arcade running. Yeah, but I know if he had his, it had his way, he'd gut the whole place. If anybody's gonna ruin the fun plex, it's him. Mark my word, it's inevitable. That doesn't sound right. He seemed easy enough to get along with, and what's more, Gavin gave me the whole speech about protecting their dreams. This looks like a like pretty sore thing. Pretty sore thing point. Pretty sore point here. A long-standing argument that, that the new guy really shouldn't get involved with. And yet, I'm involved, aren't I? I have to work with both Naomi and Gavin. And I'm not sure I should prod at it, but I kind of want to. I want to know, you know? Don't rock the boat. Clear the air and find out more. Let her keep talking. Don't rock the boat. So, uh, what's there to do that's fun around here? What? A cave? It's a fun place. It's literally a plex of fun. Right, right, I know that. Sorry, I was, I asked awkward non-questions when I'm, um, no, no, I should apologize. I just started here and I'm dumping workplace gossip on you. That's mean of me. I try to stay cheerful, really, no matter what. But try and succeed are two different words. Anyway, don't worry about it. Gavin's my problem, not yours. Right, let's get back to work, shall we? Now for the less fun part. You seem strong, strapping kind of guy. Well, a strong guy at least. Well, you're a guy. Back to death. I'm semi insulted, then. Okay, let's go. Let's get to it. Right? A little to the left now. My left. My left. Your right. Careful. Now forward. Right. Correct. I mean, not turn the right. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. And there. Careful. Carefully. Carefully, tip it into place. Victory! I gently use the rolling dolly for the giant wooden box sliding into place alongside its neighbors. The two-wheel dolly makes it easier, but hardly, but hardly easy, especially when they're only fretting over her baby getting scratched or worse, falling over. But with the work done, she's all smiles again. Yeah! Okay, glad to be done with that one. I swear, I've been working on that monitor for ages. The tube are finicky as heck. And I'm still not totally satisfied with the flyback, but thanks for helping out, Albert. I think you're gonna do you're just you're, you're gonna do just great here. Happy to her. <laughs> All right, stomach growling. Food required. Except I wasn't expecting to be working here today. I've got to pack a lunch. When you have pizza on a bagel. Oh yay! Now that now I'm just talking here. But if you have pizza on a bagel, shh. Hey. So if there are any good restaurants in walking distance, I think that bookstore next door sells donuts and stuff, but... Oh! Uh, no. Not for- not really. Unfortunately. I mean, there's a cheapo wub sub sandwich place. <laughs> oh my god. But even if that stuff is super tasty, you don't wanna- you don't wanna go there. You need to eat healthy. Hey! I know! Wait, right here! And she's off! Scurrying back to her hiding hole. And she's back. Scrolling from her high hole. Lunchtime! Here you go. She presses the box lunch into my hands. It's a bento box. I learned how to make them from my mom, who learned from her mom back when they lived in Japan. Rice and pickles, all sorts of good healthy things. Wait, you're giving me your lunch? Sure! Why not? And yet, when I when I when I first walked in this street when I first walked in as a stranger, she looked super uncomfortable with me. That escalated quickly. Uh, what do you have for lunch then? 
All I can just get some nachos from the vending machine or go hit the whole store, whole store next door. I got book delivery to pick up anyway. But you said eating healthy was important. See ya. See ya after lunch. I can't help but think she was just looking for an excuse to go get some junk food instead. I say Naomi definitely. I I bleh. I say no. I say Naomi definitely fits in with Francine's ideals for this arcade. She's got love for these games and shows. And giving me her lunch, me, a total stranger. That's a kindness I don't know if I deserve, but I appreciate it all the same. So a bento box. I only see these in anime. It's cute and hopefully plenty of calories too. Armed with a box of food, I retire to the employee lounge to get my munch on. My munch. But problem. Crunch. Penguin in there, baby. The room where I had uh, my, bizarre, my bizarre job interview was suffice for food food times. It's not much, a few holding chairs and a kitchenette, but it'll do. Uh, for utterly fantasy to the point, I have a seat in punk, my lone lunch. Oh, God! <laughs> Go here and scream. <laughs> Go here and scream. Go here and scream. Oh, wait, death. Incoherent scream. With my mind and body screaming wildly, my paralyzed form is unable to move from the vision of a terror behind for me. The half-person, half-animal waves their appendages in front of me, likely closing in for the kill. Hello? Anyone there? See? Nothing to be afraid of. Ah! Right! I see! Looks like you've stabilized. I was worried I'd scare the life right out of you. Hey, so I'm sorry if I traumatized you. Really? Hi, Ashley! Can we start over, maybe? Hi, sweet bead. I nod my head slowly, although that could have just, that could just be muscular spasm for being in shock. I'm Ashley. Hi, Ashley. And I'm Albert. I'm also Pinky the Funplex Flamingo. It's my secret yet not so secret identity. Yeah. What? What the Funplex? What now? This is almost too much to take in. Gavin was a bit, a bit of normal. Naomi was off, set, off the scale cheerful. I met someone really intense people so far. Did you sneak into the employee section just to get my autograph? No, I work here. Me, er, no. Oh, I thought you would recognize Pinky from all the signs around the arcade. A Pinky is the mascot of the Funplex after all. Pinky the Funplex Flamingo. Oh no, that's not what I meant at all. I, I mean, I work here. You work here? Since when? Since today. Today? This morning to be specific. Oh, awesome! Welcome to the Funplex. Aha! Uh -huh. hmm. I mean, it would be it would have been way cooler if you were just so enamored with the chibi flamingo creature plastered on every wall that you had to know more. Let's see. You could have stealthily maneuvered your way through all the games, sliding right on up to the employee-only door. But how did you get the door code? Ooh. Of course. You would have collected the password on pieces of paper that fell from Gavin's pocket. You searched your heart and decided to, that the four-digit number had to be the initial you needed. Let's see. Next, you needed to lie in wait for the opportunity the moment to punch in the secret code just to find me. <laughs> it just keeps going and going. She's definitely passionate about this fictional scenario. Now she's got quite the imagination, right? Is this how I come across to people as a creepy trespasser? She's definitely passionate about the fictional scenario. The way she takes an idea and runs with it, a lot of people might find that weird, but I kind of dig it. Socialized imagination. I wonder if she's a writer or something. And how would you have stuck out, I wonder? Hmm, I could have helped you, but for a price. Ashley finally realized she's been babbling to herself for a good couple minutes. Oops. Sometimes I get swept up in a good story. I mean, I gotta find some way to make this job more interesting. Is it really that dull here? No, not really. I just crave a different kind of excitement than beeps and boops, screaming children and broken machines. You aren't really painting the best picture here. Ah, jeez, I don't mean to be a downer. I just want to move up in the world. I've got things to accomplish, dreams to fulfill, cosplays to make. Cosplay? It's, as her sister's topic, it's like she's a completely different person. Now she's eyes light up and she smiles. Yeah, you know, like dressing up as your favorite video game or TV character. I love it. It's so empowering to be able to make your own costumes and wear it proudly. It's even better when people recognize what character you are. Empowering? Really? Granted, she certainly had the power to stop my heart for a few beats. Yes! 
Definitely. You want to try? Got a favorite game character? I can help you make your first cosplay if you want. In fact, I made this one. I think Ashley is the point of to her filming. I think Ashley is pointing to her flamingo costume, but it's a little hard to tell where she is with her hands as feathers. So, Pinky, your creation? Intentionally? Yep, it looks pretty good for my first mascot cosplay, doesn't it? I'd probably stick my hands together if I tried that. If you if you were going for terrifying, then yes. I know. I don't know heads from tails, but I appreciate it. I'd probably stick my hands together if I tried that. I'm all thumbs when it comes to stuff like that. Literally, if I get enough thread running between them. I'm pretty impressed, though. Naomi was going on about craftsmanship of games. Clearly, you're digging on craftsmanship of costumes. Aw, thanks. It's nice, to, it's, it's nice when hard work is appreciated. I wear it around the front plex to liven up the crowd to get people pumped to play some games, and the kids seem to adore it. That makes sense. Uh, the, the arcade guy has been completely dead so far. No crowds to pump or kids to adore by. Hey, secret between you and me. Ashley motions me to come closer. She leans in, glancing around the room once, and then talks in hush one. I did some repairs to Pinky overnight. I had to restitch the left arm. I was given an old test drive to make sure it doesn't fall off. Huh. Limbs falling off seems bad. Oh, it was. Yesterday, I was dancing with a little girl. Must have been five, six years max. Anyway, we were next to Showtime stage when she tugged down my arm and... Whoosh! Off came the arm. That girl instantly started bawling. Well, at least you can consistently... At least you are consistently scaring people. And it's not just me. Nope. Hey, now. I don't want that to happen again. I felt so bad. But enough about me. What about you? So you're Carl's replacement? I guess so. I'm the new floor attendant. I attend the floors. The floor is a thing I'm attending to when I'm not going into the cardiac arrest. <laughs> at least you're funnier than Carl, that's for sure. I can't wait to go home and tell Juniper. I do have a sense of humor. She'll be so proud. I assume you're already met Francine, but have you had a chance to meet Gavin and Naomi yet? Yet, yeah, I met them already, although it seems like they aren't too keen on each other. Right? Ashley rolls her eyes and lets out a sigh. I wish she'd hurry up and make out already. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> what? What? Seriously? So, are they going out? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Nope, but they always bicker like an old married couple. It's classic anime cliche. The ones who fight always end up together. Mike my words, Albert. Consider them marked. Beep, beep. Beep, 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 Albert. What's that sound? Dart, I set an alarm for when my lunch break was over. Time to get back to the grindstone. I didn't even get to catch the chance eat. That's no. no good. Albert needs his calories. You eat up. I'll go wash the floor. In fact, I help. how about I take the ticket desk for the next shift? You can do my job and wander the floor a bit. Fair enough, thanks. Ashley winks before her face disappears in the dark recesses of the inhuman mass. I am wolfing down rice in the shape of a little heart. Wow, it occurs to me I didn't actually pawn on my first impression of Ashley yet. Let's see. She's pretty amazing. I like her enthusiasm about her art. Ashley's got a, lo a lot going on in her head of hers. I don't understand at all. Ashley's a total cutie. I'm all aboard the pinky train. Choo-choo. She's pretty amazing. I like her enthusiasm about her art. The way Ashley's whole expression changed when she talked about things she's passionate about just warms my heart. She's beaming energy, just lights up the whole room. I wonder if one day I'll be the ex I'll be excited about something. Anyway, when my lunch break, my lunch and belly and break time complete, complete, the second half of my workday begins. Rolling into the afternoon, the crowd starts to file out. School's done. Light rising pros are heading out to their arcade of choice. With Ashley covering the desk, my job is to wander the floor looking for problems or potential problems or just making sure everything is a okay. But for starters, it's mm, but for starters, it's a good moment to collect my thoughts. I think I'm off. I'm off to a decent start with my coworkers. Good first impressions, at any rate. Cooperation is going to be a must. I've had an awful coworkers before, but that can really drag down your day. Hang on, no time for daydreaming. I think I spot. Let's see, three possible issues to look into. I should have time to get to all three of them, but which should I attack first? An irate customer in your M Mr. Moopsie's magic maze. Someone cursing up a storm with the fist of doom. Ah, yay! Someone, I'm gonna go to the, uh, someone cursing up a storm at the Fist of the Discomfort. There's a lot of shouting coming from the center of Parquet where the Fist of Discomfort is being played. I remember Iris telling me about it earlier today while I was bored to death in the ticket desk. Fist of Discomfort, or FOG, is one of the most popular uh, games in eSports circuit. 
It's been a staple of the scene for over six years. One year, Team Liquid Prodigies took the Unreal and came back to win in the dying seconds of the tiebreaker match to take home the record $5 million prize pop. That's a lot of moolah. And how? Okay, so how does it work? It's a hybrid real-time strategy and button mash brawling fight. You're on your way down the top and bottom line clearing waves in ninjas to find the top of getting a dojo. But that's the action part. The strategy part involves using special abilities to purchase items and ninja summons. F4G is sheer uh, elegance and simplicity, the way the different game system interweave to form one masterpiece to esport perfection. So summon good ninjas, punch bad ninjas, smash dojo. I'd say boiling down a rich game of, a, of action strategy played a whole world over by top games in such a way is a bit degrading, but sure, okay. Right, which all super interesting and stuff, but right now all I care about is dealing with a loud mouth currently playing the game. The closer I get, the louder the yelling gets, the more of these are words are. Yay, creepy! Hi, Queen B! What the f- what, what the actual- was that? Nope, those are definitely all words my mother would just move them. You've got to be kidding me! There is no way that is not even possible. Those hitboxes don't even connect in this game. It all night long. Haha, <laughs> get ripped. Oh, this is far from over, scrub. I've saved up a little something extra special for you. I've been baiting you to attack my sensei, which you fell for hard. Oh, hey, don't forget to mention that I bought an extra alternate technique scroll for my dojo. Whoops, Mobby. Wait, what? You have been farming? How could XP sharing technique with creep waves? Take this. Five full explosive claw technique. What? How did you defeat me? No! Oh, GG. <laughs> Fodder. No one can defeat me, Queen B. Hi, Queen B. The most badass woman at the arcade. My dry eyes painfully blinking make me realize I've been standing here watching intently during the whole exchange. I'm not 100% sure what just happened, but that didn't matter. I was completely sucked in. Couldn't tear my eyes away. It was like watching a train wreck. I mean, if the train was an arcade game and the wreck was that guy's face. Hey, kid. What are you staring at? Sorry! Never seen a champion of my caliber before? Da 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 Um... No! Nom. Oh, I... Seeing as I don't know how to begin a start and even consider how to respond to her question, I have to take a moment and collect my thoughts. From what I have somehow gathered, she goes by Queen Bee. That... <coughs> <coughs> that jacket she's wearing identifies her as the member of L7 Gaming, an arcade esports team. And... She's the most direct, fierce person I've met all day. That's saying a lot, considering who I've run into so far. She's fun to hang out on, no doubt. Why so rude, though? What a sore winner. Talk about dominating personality. I feel the urge to kneel and submit. Oh, God, Albert, don't be kinky. She'd be fun to hang out on, no doubt. With that level of excitement always gushing out, I can only imagine how much enjoyment she gets out of all life. What can I say? People love winning, and it seems like she wins a lot, at least between bursts of, what did Iris call it? Saltiness? Hey, don't just stand there all weird and quiet like. It's creepy. Sorry, I'm trying to collect my thoughts. She snaps her fingers to grab my tendon. So, are you gonna f***ing quarter up or not? Oh, God. Think you can best the hottest rising star of L7? No, no. From what I've seen, I know I couldn't best a scrub, let alone a professional competitive player in this game. Nope. No, thank you. Plus, I'm not sure I'm allowed to play games while I'm working. You? You work here? Yep. Uh, yes, me. And what's your job? Hassling me? I'm actually, I'm actually pretending to work here. Shh. Oh, it's all just a front. I wander around the floor to, you know, pick up drop tickets in hope of getting one of those giant stuffed flamingos behind the prize card. I know, right? If I was good at those ticket games, I, as I am of FOD, or FOD, I'd like a flock of giant pink flamingos. Maybe I'd even give you one. Maybe. Hey, they haven't given you a name tag yet. How am I supposed to know who you are? I think that was actually a weird tactic to have me introduce myself to her. I'm Albert. I did technically just start working here six hours ago. It might take them time to issue me a name tag. Maybe they need to send a carrier pigeon to an ancient monastery with name tags are forged in the vast clay ovens. <laughs> nah, Gavin's just slacking a bit. I'll take to that silly boy for you. Make sure you get some proper respect. Uh... Thanks? 
No problem. We gamers gotta stick together. I'm Queen B, by the way. Aggro style FOD lane pusher specialist for L7 Gaming. <laughs> She's a badass. I figure that when you put your arms over your head, cheered and shouted, no one can defeat me, Queen B. Hey, I do not sound like that. <laughs> well, maybe a little. Just a little bit. <laughs> anyway, I'm on the regular around here besides Pre Pre, Pre Pre, and Tio. So you'll be seeing a lot of me in the future. Let's hope you last longer than the last guy. Oh great, now she's even making my job into a competition. I hope there's a I hope there's a betting pool too. You look like a smart kid. You have seen one of my many streams on the internet, right? Nope. I literally have no idea what you're talking about. Wow. Really? Have you been living under a rock for the past decade? If you consider a small yet formerly apartment as a rock, then yes. Oh, you sweet child. You are so innocent and pure. Come on, let me show you the path of darkness. That is the internet. Nope. 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 Sure. I'd like to learn more. Will it hurt? Or traumatize me? Sure, I'd like to learn more. Well, it is part of my job to know all about the games here. Ooh. And if Queen Bee is going to give me some insight on the culture around this, this game, I should take advantage of that. Lead me farther than the dark abyss, my mistress. Yeah. Aw, yeah. Queen Bee grabs my arm and pulls me close to the fist of discomfort cabinet. And upon further inspection, I've seen the whole haphazard pile of text she rigged up. You can't just you can't just plug one of those cams into the internet, so I use a number of clips on webcams and mics and stuff. The webcam there is broadcast to my own personal PC back home, and then streams matches live to all my fans. The chat room appears on my phone. Costs a bit to put everything all together, and it takes like half an hour to rig up and test each morning, but after doing it here for a couple years, it's easy peasy. Aside from Naomi grinding her teeth at my clip-on camera damaging the paint job, I mean. Anyway, I prefer to stream for the funplex stat than from home. There's so much to miss out on sitting by a year lonesome with those console versions of FOD. The cowards, the wicked trash talk the community. But wait, are you broadcasting live right now? Are we live right now? Nope, no <laughs> way. <laughs> no, that was part of my warm up matches. I've got a pretty big tournament coming up, so I try to get as much practice in as possible. Even if it was a bunch of fodder. As in, as in fodder. As you know, as in, you know, chum. Lunch meat. Scrubs. Losers. I got the idea. Yes. Queen Bee sees something out of the, out of the corner of her eye and glances around the core floor. She gives a nod at someone hanging near the Street Fighters cabinet. Ah, my crew is starting to trickle in. We should be starting team practice soon. Wait, what time is it? At the tone, at the tone, it will be 2.25 p.m. Eastern. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. What the? Fuck me. I gotta go live in five minutes. Listen, kid, it's been swell. We'll chat later, right? Sure. Uh, one thing. Can you keep swearing down at least a little? We've got kids around here, and I don't want you to get in trouble with Gavin. Him? Meh. But for you, I keep it PG-13 rating. Now, if you excuse me, there's some butts out there that I need to kick. Later. Later. Okay. And without a wave of twirl, she completely abandons me in the return to her fist of discomfort game. Queen Bee fires up her broadcasting range, shouting, the middler swearing, starting up again. I should probably get here. I should probably get out of here before I actually end up in the stream. Passion seems to run deep in the arcade. Everybody's spurt burning with passion for, well, various things, but hey, passion's passion, right? She seems to like me, which will make my job easier as long in the long run. There's a huge FOD community in this arcade, despite being a tiny strip mall joint. Good to know. Let's see what handle next. An ear, an, an ear customer miss, near Mr. Mopey's Magic Meet, or a lot of crowds near the Showtime stage. Let's head over to the Showtime. In the distance, I see a number of people gathering, which is the price of the first half of my shift was completely in utter solitude. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to see the people do, do come to the cave, but that's quite a crowd that's assembling. Like, larger than Queen B team, rowdy or two. This has to be against some fire code or safety protocol or something, right? Think of citizen enjoying a living. Having an es escape route in case of emergency is necessary. Time to clear the way and pave my own path of safety. As I approach, I see flashing neon lights accompanied by an eat pure Euro drop draft in the entirety flashback right of 198X. I can't help but nod my head to the beat. A pulsing mass of people are surrounded Showtime stage, cheering on the current player. The cave itself keeps the whole corner of the arcade, requiring a far amount of space to actually play. Showtime stage, an ultra, ultra modern smash hit. It uses motion tracking sensors hidden behind the colored spotlight to check dance pose, accuracy, and score your sweet mood. It's pure dance fever. Can you catch the fever, Albert? 
I had my dance fever shot to the doctor's office earlier this season. At the dance ends, one of the players hops down from the stage and immediately starts taking time to do young man leaning up against the back wall. Oh, hi! Did you see it, Tio? I got my first AA on Stop the Beat. Yay! Yeah. Hi, Tio! Hi, my sweet boy! I smooch you. I give you hugs. Bring it in. Oh, you're so sweet. Yeah, I did. You're doing great. Remember last month, you couldn't even pass that song. Totes impressive. I'm going to keep practicing. One day, maybe we can pass you. Hey, I hope you do. And when you do, you can be the one who brings in new dancers and teaches them how to play. And the next song starts my issues from their conversation to observe the uh, Grayson and, in and insert a wind movement coming from the show's on stage. I feel my head bobbing, my foot tapping. Hey, it's a really catchy song. Can you blame me? I'm getting really into it. When? I feel a hand on my shoulder. Care to dance? Hi, right, Tio! Oh, you're my sweet boy, and I will smooch you all day and all night long. All night. How about you? We want to take the spotlight? All right, what? Dance with a high like you? Absolutely. What? In public? I think not. Sure, I can learn as I go. Let's dance. Back when I was a kid stomping around on the dance mat, games as a kid, uh, they had arrows. I'm not sure I'd even know how to play this one, but it has caught my curiosity. For the previous observed uh, converse, uh, conversation, this guy seems to know the ins and outs of the weird da uh, weird dancing game and they can teach. Before I commit to getting down with my bad self, I think I should know a little more about exactly what this entails. Plus, I'm used to playing these games solo, less chance of stomping on someone else's foot that way. Tis a valid point. However, how could you resist to ask us? How could I resist to ask a guy such as yourself? You caught my eye in the moment you walked over. Hey, wait. You're new here, right? Yep. Yes. Very. Name's Mateo. But everyone here just calls me Teo. Teo! Oh, so it's not Teo. It's Teo. <laughs> my bad. My bad, my sweet boy. Sorry, Teo. Did not mean to do that. Teo is the best dancer. Greatest guy here. He's sort of like our uh, leader. Yeah? Oh, please. I'm nothing, really. Teo is best boy! He looks directly into my eyes. Nothing as special as you. Will you stop flirting at me? My god! He is going to be my swoochie boy. I just like to show newbies the ropes and teach them how to play. Our community is small, oh. but we're all super close. My sweet smooch boy! I think you'd be a perfect addition to our gang. I work here. So, what do you say? Play our silly dancing game? Teo is rushing at army, waiting for my hand to grab his. Go for it. Politely decline, shake my head, no. Politely decline. The offer is hard to fuse, dance games are fun, you know, but I can't imagine being up there dancing in front of a huge crowd. Maybe after I played Stone Shine Stage multiple times. Alone. Possibly in the dark. I'll give it a try eventually, after I start up the basic steps. Maybe you could teach me how things work. I would enjoy that. I've taught many lead footers, newbies, to become master movers and shakers. No time for lessons, unfortunately. I'm the clock right now. I'm the new floor attendant, Albert. Really? But I haven't seen you around here at all. What happened to the other guy? He was actually pretty cool at Showtime Stage now that I think about it. He's out. I'm in. It's currently year zero. It's currently the year zero on the floor attendant, Albert regime. Hello there. Well, it's an honor to meet you, Albert. I hope we get to know each other fairly very well. Indeed. For someone that loves Showtime Stage as much as you, I don't actually have. I haven't actually seen you play yet. True. Most of the time during these meetups, I tend to let everyone else play. I go around and make sure everyone is happy and having a blast. What about you and your feelings? Teal shrugs. Uh... My happiness comes from making other people happy. That's all I need in life. Which is which is all well and good, but I don't need to deal with these crowd. How about how about how about the best to handle it? Hey, wanna film a workplace safety video? We need to seriously talk about the crowd sizes. Can you disperse Can you disperse your fans for me, please? We need to talk we need to certain um Look, this is great and all, but can you thin out your crowd a little for me? Fire codes, emergency exits, you know, that sort of thing. Sheesh. Come on, it's not that bad. I've seen hotter crowds most weekends around this game. Rules are rules. Yeah, you're right. The least I can do is accommodate. Can do accommodating. Luckily, the song has been playing just finished. Tio jumps on the stage and cups his hands over the mouth. Hey, listen! We need to keep the area to the left off of the stage clear. Oh man, but why? I like my spot. Hey now, you know the deal. We ought to be cool about fire safety. It's Albert's first day, so let's show him some respect. 
I see everyone turn and glare at me. Great. Now I'm going to be known as a party pooper. I guess I've had worse reputation in my lifetime. Like that one time I had to close the pool because of that dirty band just floating water. No one will talk to me for a week. Hey, hey, don't disappoint me, crew. Albert is doing his job. Reluctantly, the cloud reshuffles itself in a semi orderly fashion. As everyone settles into a safer way of watching the game, Tio jumps down and comes back to me. Better? I'm not genuinely impressed with how Tio can capture his community's attention. They listen to him and have the utmost respect for him. Yeah, actually, much better. Didn't mean to cause any trouble. Sometimes we just get so caught up in the game, you know? Of course you know. I do that. Hey, you should still join us later. Maybe when your shift's over. We'll all be here dancing until closing time. Well, I will smooch your face later. As long as the dancing is within the law, carry on. Officer Albert has spoken. I start to make ready, ready to do my next venture when I remember something I should do. I turn back to Teal. Hey, thanks. No problem. My smooch boy! He's my smooch boy. Well, I feel nice and accomplished. And I was upholding the safety of the arcade to make sure, uh, new friend. I said it's pretty good on our first date. Even Gowns got impressed, right? What the business sorted out. It's time to leave Showtime Stadium. Let's see what's handled next. An irate, an irate customer near Mr. Moopy's magic maze. My mutant floor attendant senses uh, detect danger from the left-hand side of the arcade. I quickly rush over. I quickly rush all the 30 feet of the scene. Crowd already in progress. Come on! Hurry the f up and finish your game. Do you? Do you work here? I saw you behind the desk earlier. Note to self: Ask Gavin for a name tag or something. Yes, I'm Albert, the floor attendant. Well, stop pretending to the carpet to attend to me. I want this to wrap up his damn game so I can play. Ashley's face is obscured beneath her costume's mask, but I can feel her wince at the man's curse up the blue street. Sir, there are children present. Please keep the swearing to a minimum. You kick that fast piece off this game and I'll sing Mary, have a little lamb all you want. Figure I ought to hear the fat piece side of the story before rushing to judgment. I tap the player on the shoulder. He doesn't even notice. So I tap again twice. Hmm? Sir, there are other players waiting to give Mr. Movie's magic maze a spin. Curiosity, the player looks at the game. Marquis, thank you, Naomi, which is simply reading Moopy. You know the game's full name. Sure, I played it when I was a kid. It's actually called Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze, right? Wizards and pellets and monsters and stuff. Yep. A bit tearless as he laser focused on the game, and I can see why. He's currently sitting at seven. 714,900 points. Holy crap, that's a heck of a high score. Or is that other guy probably put, holy, that's a, oh, a high score. Excuse me. Right, right, sir, can you please wrap up your game? Hmm? Nope. I'm keeping a good pace here. Plenty of livestock on the path for getting close to the world record before kill screen. Somehow the thick arcade jargon sounds classy when draped in that British accent like I'm watching some documentary program on the BBC. Yeah, but this is a public arcade. Other folks want to play the games, too. He finished clearing the current board while pondering the predicament. Okay. At first, I think he's stepping away from the end game, but he's letting his stock of 50 extra dudes slowly deplete as he, as he pulls out as well. Without a pause, he pulls out $3,000 in cash and holds out. Will this cover that? For a moment, I flash back to a movie where some dude pays another dude to sleep with his wife, and they roll around in bed covered in money, and, um, cover what exactly? The cost of the game. The game itself. I've never seen this much raw cash in one place that I didn't give it to no one. It's not even in the 20s, dude, rolling in Benjamin. I am, um, one moment, please. On it. Fortunately, Iris had already, my messenger open app, Luke Gavin's contact video. What's up with Frank Ian? Customer wants to buy Moopy for 3K. What do? In less than a minute, I hear a response. Considering we paid 200 for it plus parts, yes, absolutely sell the relic immediately. Well, okay then. Although how Naomi's gonna react to this offloading one of her darlings just because Gavin wants to make 50, 15 foot profit, it feels like kind of weird to be taking advantage of this guy's lack of grasp of real cost of an old arcade machine. I know all this work, uh, workplace drama is going to catch up with me someplace, but with that random breathing down my neck, I gotta make a decision. The game was 200, but I'm not sure we should sell it. Yeah, the, the game's worth two was 200. I'm not worth. It's an older game, but it was actually costing about $200, but, well, it's the Parson Arcade, sir. I expect the apparent gazillion to protest in getting his way, but he's smiling. You're right, Mr. Moopy's home, after all. Let's compromise. I'll pay you $1,000 American and own, and, and own the game, but you keep it here. And in return, I get to play as long as I want, provided nobody's already playing. That way, I can keep chasing the score, but your arcade stays whole, and I hate to break up a loving family. 
None of them would be relieved to hear that. Even if Gavin may flay for me passing up two grand. Good, I'd hate to make the enemy cry. How can I live with myself? What's well, news of Rando hopping mad? To be fair, we had been kind of ignoring that he this. What the f man? What kind of arcade is that anyway? F this place. I'm going to deck to his palace. And we just lost the customer. Stopping out his way of the door. Stomp, stomp, stomp. On the plus side, knowing I'll cry, on the negative side, I just drove a rando out of the out into the cold. What a disagreeable fellow. Ah, Gavin! Oh no, you're not Gavin. As for the player, well, he's gone, he goes right back to playing, eating pellets, zapping ghost monsters, clearly amazing. With the crisis behind us, I can actually focus on who this guns or rich guy actually is. Oh, digging that dead bod. Splashing around the cash, aren't we, Mr. Moneybags? He seems to care more about this than more about than just his game. Taking some time, someone wallowing around the lower tax brackets, the rich can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And yet, that's not what this guy did. He could have, he could have, but let let he let us keep the game. He just wanted to play. That's all. And why? Because of Naomi. Because of the funplex. It's a home and a family for the games and for us. <clears throat> Maybe it's for the best. I sent the rando out the door in favor of the guy. So you know, you know Naomi. He's happy talking. Of play. course. I'm a Funplex regular. Percy! My name's Percy. <laughs> Percy Smooches! Hugs! Come in, Smooches! Oh, you get all the hugs. Oh, bring it in! I love Percy, get Smooches. I'd hazard you're our new floor attendant? Yes. I was here when Francine seated you behind the desk earlier. Hi. That's me, Albert McFealty, Arcade Wrangler. Well then, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, <laughs> and I look forward to getting to know you better. I will smooch him so hard! So, you've seriously been just play, been playing Moopy all day, huh? What can I say? It's my calling. <laughs> I actually owned a Moopy cabinet once. Had it in my flat. But playing it by myself, all alone in the dark, <laughs> it's not the same. Ah. I need the atmosphere. I forget. In Britain, they call them flats and not apartments. The beeps and the boops. No, those you eventually learn to filter out. I mean, everything. Aww. The games, the lights, the kids, mm. the feeling of being in an arcade. Smooching. I score my best when I'm in real world conditions. It's all about the emotions, <laughs> the laughter and the tears, the Aww. excitement of competition. I'm a smooch him. I need that swirling chaos of human emotions around me to play uh -huh. at my finest. Mm -hmm. Naomi gets it. Naomi gets that. She keeps Moopy in top condition for the day I eventually land my high school. What's the current world record then? About three and a half million. This guy has been standing here since I was working the morning shift. Hours and hours. He's still only got a 720k in his game. Can't imagine him being in anything but a top health condition to try this. Guy's gotta have legs made out of carbon fiber and bladder of tungsten. Mm. I just had a few extra lives drained out whenever I need to go pee. Also, he may be psychic. I feel like I should let him get back to the game. But burning question, they burn like fire. You must be a solid, you must have a solid job, good income. So, so you get your moopy dipped in gold? Your score's more important than your bank balance? So I take it your high score's more important than that to you than your bank balance? Then you just decided to buy a moopy, I mean? Why? Of course, the score is more important than anything. Except eating and paying rent. More important than anything. A few hours a day of trading, of trading after I go and keeps the bank balance in balance. Anybody could do that if they had the head of numbers. He points to a current score on the top of Moopy's screen. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to define myself by numbers, this is the one I choose. If I don't feel people are defined by their work, I know the arcade is home to those who've made their passion into their work. But it's passion and that's... And that matters more. I have my passion the same as anyone. I look forward to learning yours as well. When I'm not deep in the middle of my game, I mean. I'm getting more and more distracted by the game. I should leave it be. I have to do a thing about a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Be seeing you, Mr. McFeelty. Yet another weird encounter in a string of weird encounters. By the end of the by the end, he sounded more like a high score junkie, as you hear in the documentaries. Obsessed driven kind of strange. But that's not the impression I had in him from the beginning. He smiled when talking about not spinning up the arcade. There's something more about going here, but well, he's Funplex regular. There'll be plenty of more of time to learn more later. He's got work to do. The arcade is now at peace. My work here is done. Well, actually, we're a few hours before closing, so my work here isn't quite done yet, but you know. Gavin! I'm so at peace, in fact, I don't even notice the underboss of the arcade signing up behind Good me. Good day. Um, hmm. Not a bad first day so far. 
I've been keeping tabs on you. Well, others have been, and they've been texting me. You know, you should consider getting a proper group chat app going. I'm not a crappy phone plan. My texts aren't free. A valid point. I'll look into that. Impressive. I'm impressed at how you handled yourself. I think you're going to work out just fine. Anyway, I've prepared your paperwork. If you'd like to go sign it and make the working relationship a bit more above board. Yeah. So you're staying? Please tell me you're staying. I mean, you. I mean, I fed you and everything. <laughs> Francine hasn't fired him yet. All right, right. An adorable nightmare <laughs> joins the improv staff staff. Mm -hmm. Albert's off to a great start. Here's your first day, followed by many more. Don't you two have jobs to attend to? Just order a replacement power supply for Robotron. Nothing left to do for the day. Not many kids around me to entertain. Finally, a quiet moment. My dream job has been going mile a minute since I got here. Hmm, is this my dream job? I told Francine when I was looking for hope. I've been so used to life dumping all over me that I've come to expect the worst generally. And yet, I can't say the fun place has dumped on me. It's been hectic at times, a little too much, but not really in a bad way. I've started to get along with my coworkers. I'm helping people with their problems. Maybe I'm finding hope I was looking for after all. We've only got a few hours till closing and a nice quiet. How about, a, how about we game a bit? Speak for yourself. I've still got paperwork to handle. Oh, come on. Don't, like, don't act like you don't game. Um. Irrelevant. I know, you dirty little secret. What, Naomi? You sneak in early each morning to play pinball. You're a pinball wizard. Ah, uh, well, what of it? I, be, I bring order to chaos. Pinball is, every, is very expression of that art form. You know, we sh <coughs> <coughs> uh, Sorry. Got phlegm. Uh, getting sick. <coughs> Much better. You know what we should do? Impromptu pinball turkey. The girls are giggling. I'm finding myself smiling right alongside them. All in all, not bad to win like my, my first day. Aw. By the way, I've booked a birthday oh, party God this afternoon. Oh, God damn it. No. By the way, I booked... The looks of confusion is not right terror on their faces, all laughter dying off immediately are vaguely concerning to me. Sorry, sorry, I meant to tell you, dears, but I plum forgot. <laughs> uh, birthday party? How old are the kids, may I ask? It's a fifth birthday. Oh, to be young again. F f five years old? They always start pulling out her hair, eyes wide and trembling. Throwing ski balls overhand into the glass. Jumping up and down on the pinball machine, putting chewing gum in the coin slots, pulling on my costume, tearing off pieces of art. Naomi, Ashley, keep it together. We survived birthday parties before. Doom! Doom! The end is nigh! I'd hate to get in the way of all the fun. Yep, it's time for my afternoon nap anyway. You have fun, oh, dears. God. Right, battle stations! Everyone, I'll take the ticket day so I can oversee operations. Ashley, greet the kids! Naomi, watch for hardware damage! Albert, roaming duty, look for trouble! Do what you can! Prepare yourselves! They're coming! Like an oncoming tidal wave, a rubble like this fell before it is seen. Parents pulling into the parking lot, minivans disorganizing kindergartens, and suddenly... Kids! Oh! Oh! An explosion of small humans rushing the door, bursting into our cave, or scattering every which way. Even before any of them get their tokens, they're grabbing at joysticks, smashing buttons, eager to get their game on. They even pretend to be playing. The crew assumes battle stations, knowing me by a fragile pinball machine, asking through the door, trying to direct the incoming kids to greet them. Gavin armed with pre-stack ten rolls of tokens, quickly exchanging them with the adults, beach waiting in line at the change machine. As for the programmers, while Quinn, B, and Tio's friends bolt for the exit, abandoning them, keen on getting out ahead of the surge of kiddies, I guess. That's all very good, but I've got a no idea where they're supposed to be. Roman dude again said, look for trouble. Gavin said I mean I was doing that before, but now the chaos is like. For a few minutes, I li I li I'm like a pinball machine bouncing around, or like a frog trying to cross the highway of traffic. Eventually, it's about three... <clears throat> I have about three possible problems on the rise, and Albert, professional floor attendant, is ready to attend to them. Which of these should I tackle first, though? I may not be able to deal with all of them. Two kids fighting over the box of cupcakes near Naomi Asher, and I'm going to go a kid near Teal and Queen Bee. The sign of hardship calls for me to five the fast cars five racing game. Shouting adults, crying children are never particularly good signs, and I hope beyond hope that I can take this time. 
I shake the discomfort off now that not the time to doubt myself. I need to find out what's going on step. I look get closer to reviving the engines and checking the uh, click clacking of shifting gears. I see a grown woman berating a cowering child. I didn't. Aw. Admit it. I know you and you did, you brat. You manipulated my precious son and putting his tokens in your game. You should be ashamed of yourself. I... Uh, S sorry Children like you are the absolute worst garbage. Ma'am, keep your voice down. There's no need to shout at a child, nonetheless. What's going on here? This jerk of a boy told my sweetest beyond sweet Josh that he should put in his own tokens in his racing machine so he could play it for free. Josh turned those tokens from his own allowance and then won't let some devil child steal his money. Let's just take a moment and calm down, okay? Before I continue anything else about Queen Bee and Teal out of the corner of my eye, Queen Bee looks infuriated and Teal has buried his face in his hands. Actually, now that I stop and think about it, they might be having him inside. The racing games are right next to the Showtime stage. Teal probably had a good vision advantage to the point of the whole thing if he was managing on stage. Just by the way Queen Bee brought for her, I can tell she's not sitting with her. I could ask one of them for help, or I could try to solve the problem myself. Let's ask Teal for help because I don't want Queen Bee shouting at them. She was right next to the action uh, when it went down. I decided to check in with him. Ma'am, I know you're upset right now, but if you, but if you, but if you please stop shouting, we can get all this shit off. Teo, I refuse to calm down until this child has been appropriately punished. This such a disrespectful tyrant in the arcade is appalling. Oh, I'm giving you the worst online reviews. Teo jumps down from the stage and approaches the shouting woman. He puts his hands up. Sheesh. Simmer down, simmer down. This can all be explained with science. Really? I mean, right, of course. Tail, by all means, elaborate. Tia walks past the right of the fast cars game five. He casually slumps in the driver's seat and then motions to the car. Let me show you both something. Tia points to the car console. It's got a wheel which is fantastic and totally necessary for driving game pedals and gear, gear shifts so on. But the feature Tia draws to attention to are two coin slots which are vertically stacked and one on top of the other. Okay, so this is where you, drop your, where you drop your tokens into play of the game. However, do you see how this is practically in the middle of the two identical consoles? Hmm. Which game does the top swipe belong to, the right hand or the left hand? Right. It's always the right one, right? Uh, I mean, correct? Of course not, fool. It's the left one. Exactly. Albert is correct. What? Preposterous. See, this import games can be confusing. I'm sure your son just put his tokens in the wrong spot. Common mistake. It really happens all the time. Considering how confused I was, I could see how a small child would get just as, if not more, confused. Honestly, mine was just a lucky guess. I give Tio a grateful look. How could the crisis have been dealt with? The first year customer would definitely apologize for you and the boy now. How dare you imply my precious Josh was wrong? I can't believe the gall of some people. Josh, Josh, get over here. We're leaving this horrible arcade right now. Oh, well, that did, didn't see that one coming. The woman scoops up her child and storms out the front door. I don't think we'll see her or her son anymore. And frankly, I'm cool with that. Once they're gone, Tia looks back at me from the driver's street. And no shows. can do. There's just no pleasing some people. I feel sorry for some. That's no way their kid to be treated. Tia looks just as brightly. Happy, <clears throat> sight eyes glaze over his lips and cops. I haven't seen Tio act like this before. He looks so upset. I wonder if I should check in with him. Hey, you feeling okay? I know it's really none of my business, but I should make sure Tio's okay. It seems like he really can emphasize with the kid's plight. Hey, everything all right? You need anything? After pausing for a minute, the fire turns down his eyes. Yeah, I'll be okay. Just remind me how I got treated by teachers, notably. I spaced out in class daydreaming, and then they'd rack me over in the coals for just to assert authority. Total old kid. Bummer. It really bums me out to see adults mistreat kids. Kids that way. You know, uh, I like I like to treat people with respect, even when they're in the wrong, like, I, like you saw just now with that woman. I appreciate you taking some time to ask me. You know shows you've got respect, too, and empathy. I'm, t I'm, a, I'm you're a kind person, Albert, mm, but I'm not that important. You should make sure that boy's safe and sound. Catch you later. I'm heading back to the showtime stage. Holla if you need anything. I give a quick wave to Tio's return to the game. After poking around, I managed to find the kid, still shaken up from the whole ordeal. Hey, sorry about that. Are you going to be okay? I, uh, I think so. I swear I didn't do anything. The other kid you just came out of nowhere and dropped his tokens in my slot. After I lost, I got off the game and offered it to him. He just ran away. And then the woman approached you and started yelling. The boy nods, wrapping his snotty nose off his shirt. Uh-huh. Well, if it's any consolation, the bad lady's gone. And I don't think she's going to ever come back. The boy cheeks still freak the feathers like small clouds. Thank right? you. Thank you. And tell that nice man thanks for sticking up for me, too. I nod and the boy scurries off to rejoin some of his other friends. Right, that started out. But the other two situations are about to spin out of control. I've only got time to deal with them, which is one. 
two kids fighting over the box. Eh, let's do Gavin. Mm. Ah, crap. I know how to do this. Two kids. I smell disaster on the wind. It smells sweet. As in, I can smell the box of birthday cupcakes. One of the parents left near the ticket desk, and the kids swarming around it, scavenging favorite color. At first, my inner child nearly offended offended that someone thought that, that one of those icing bob cupcakes, cupcake, cupcake cakes, was a superior to the actual birthday cake. And there's actually a larger issue to save with them. I want a chocolate. Don't take all the chocolates. I want two cupcakes. Give me two cupcakes. Oh, wow. The kids actually have talking. No fear. Mm. Everybody gets one, and mine's got to be chocolates. Of course. The kids are at the front and grab the last one. Finders keepers, losers weepers. The parents aren't paying attention. They're too busy complaining about their jobs and the weather and the PTA and stuff. Meeting with the first case face drone, nobody's there to stop ah, it. Mm. Stop it, stop it! I want chocolate! Jesus! Oh, God. Oh, no. As the Bobby Wilds of Icing and Sponge Cake go flying, I glance over to the coin op games, which are about to get caught in the crossfire. <laughs> None of who's busy trying to unjam a joystick, one of the kids waggled too hard, looks up to see Cupcake Onslaught coming her way. As does Ashley, the fuzzy co whose fuzzy costume is a nice inventing target for flying confectionery. Back fast, Albert, act fast. Try to save them both! Quickly, I hurl myself into the action. Get down! Bam, 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 bam! Numbness sets in as multiple rounds of frosting coated mortar fire impact against my body. Fuck! Calm down! They owe me! Ashley! Save the kids! Fuck! So much sugar! When I finally hit the ground, my clothes are totally ruined. Oh! But at last, my noble self sacrifice could not completely protect them. No one seems to get the idea and shields the game with her body. A few straight cupcakes that missed to me hit her, but otherwise no damage is done. Ashley takes a few shots before me, but it could have been worse. A parent swarm around the kids' cupcake war instigators. Now me Ashley kneel down and check on my phone form. Albert, are you okay? Oh my! Could be paralyzed from the neck down. Albert, blink once if you're paralyzed. Blink twice if not. I'm not paralyzed. Oh hey, or you can talk. That works. Now me helps me to my feet, although I have been to be careful not to mingle my icing with her icing in the box. Ugh. Days like these, I'm glad I wear an apron. Ew, cupcakes are food, not fashion. Oh, poops. <laughs> oh, poops. Colored icing is just the worst. I think I can get these two out with some club soda. Fortunately. Guess they got all of us, huh? But Albert, worst of all. You know that was super selfless of you trying to save us from the splatter. Speaking as a floor attendant, you score a silver medal. Despite all those letting us splattered a little, they seem to be in good spirit. I just try to keep that rolling. My cupcake food was not strong enough, but I must. <laughs> unfortunately, that unfortunate that I learned my skills in the mastery of midair cupcake retrieval failed me in the art. The art of neat. I have dishonored myself and my cake. I must train in ten years, during which I cannot let the shame of the incident drive the fire in my soul. Gather the heights of my cupcake defense. I just gave, just get, just have Ashley daydream of a training montage for you. Same effect, but saves a lot of time. I am at your disposal, although my screenwriting fees are industry standard if you want a full-on Ashley treatment. Anyway, thanks, Albert. That that was a complete mess, but I guess I could have been more of a complete mess if you had done that. Yeah. I better get back to fixing that jo this joystick. You should clean up and get back to it. Also, that's pretty starts to go. Yeah. Good luck, and hey, good work. But if you excuse me, I need to go clean the poor pinky bit. That could have been, that could have been better, uh, but it also could have gone worse, much worse. More importantly, I keep their spirits up. Even Ashley, who was clean icing out of her fuzzy felt, came out cheerful. With a brief nod from Gat, I snatched up the official Farm Flex t-shirt and replaced my cupcake top. After a few months for the bathroom to chain and wipe the ice on the I'm ready to go again. Two problems in the can. Now to deal with that crying kid in the ski ball machines. Oh, and then she's gone. Well, crap. Percy looks up briefly from clearing level 78 of Moopy. Looking for that girl? I think her parents took her home. Party turned sour for her, I suppose. Trap, I wasn't fast enough. You can't be everywhere at once, Albert. <clears throat> Cheer up, love. You're still doing better than the last guy who stood at your post. Seconded. I saw you deal with that obnoxious parent with the cupcake war. You did well today. Seeing Gavin actually smiling. Weird. It is weird. But I'm not going to say not to praise for my sub boss. Things may be seen cooling down. I suggest you take a few minutes in the break room while you're there in long action. Ash and I will handle things from now, and she swapped off. Swap off when you get back. Mm-hmm. Percy ducks out of the conversation without actually moving away with refocus on his game. I could use a few minutes. Yeah. Thanks, Gavin. I'll be right back. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. I slip away ahead of the employee lounge. Mm. What a day. Quirky co-workers, disheaded, just diehard pro gamers, violent kids getting in volatile situations. I'd say it's a recipe for wackiness or some such cliche, but nothing can easily dis dismiss cliche when it's happening to you directly. Frankly, I'm exhausted. I drop down into one of those cheap folding metal chairs in the employee break room, groaning and rolling my head back to try and work those kinks out of my sore shoulders and spot an upside down kick. Huh? Oh wait, I'm the one leaning backwards. I sit up and turn around instead. Better. Wait, what's the kid doing back here? Hey, uh, I think he was hoping I wouldn't notice him. Um, hi. Hi, and you are? Mikey. Okay, that's a start. Hi, Mikey. My name's Albert. So what are you doing back here? This is an employees only area. Wait, there's a keypad. How'd you get in here? That that guy at the desk dropped this. He holds out a piece of paper with a door code written on it. Huh! Scroll with veracity, wild wild storytelling being more fact than fiction. Okay, but you can't stay back here. It's well, I don't see any knives or stabbing implements left out in the open. So I guess it's technically safe, but please don't send me back out there. Well, this is curious. I lean in so it can be in the same eye level. Something wrong? You can tell me I work here. I'm the guy who solves problems. No, no problems. Just don't want to go out there. Do you want to play with your friends? And it gives me the most cynical, bitter laugh I've ever seen out of kindergarten. I don't got any friends. I don't know anybody here. Oh, no. My family just moved to the city. And before that, we lived in another city. And one more for that, but I was too little to remember. Remember? Mom told me to come to the party anyway, and I didn't want to, but she took me anyway. And then she left because she's got to work. Aw. New Cowden Town, huh? He nods mutterly. Still, I should have busted him then and there, brought him back out of the party where the other parents could supervise him. I should have told Gavin. I should have enforced the rules of the arcade. Okay, kid. I won't tell on you. If you want to stay back here for the rest of the party, I'll keep you company. Thanks. You really won't tell my mom? Nope. Why? I thought you'd want to make me go. You're, you're an adult like my mom. Hey, I wasn't always an adult. I was a kid once. The new kid in town, in fact. <clears throat> you were the new kid? <clears throat> yeah. Although for me, that started happening back when I was 10. Again and again, moving from town to town, school to school, never really making any friends, not for years. Mom and Dad kept losing, kept losing jobs and taking new ones, worse ones. They'd be working all day long, too tired when they came home to do much of anything. After years of this, I'd stop hoping things would get better. I decided I'd just take what I could get. I'd go with the flow. What's that mean? It means you don't care. Some things are good, some things are bad. But you don't care. You just do what you have to do without really being sad over it. But that sounds so sad. You weren't sad? God damn it, Gay! I wasn't gonna cry! Ah! It's sad to never care about anything, right? Oh. I guess I was sad. I just told myself I wasn't going to be sad, even though I really was. And when I bit my tongue hard, because my little involuntary trip down memory lane was nothing helping this kid out. Wouldn't have helped little Albert out if the adult did this for me. Stop, game! Ah! So instead, I decided to be an adult that little Albert would have needed. Hey, could have been totally worse. Your mommy loves you. That's why she works so hard. <laughs> you know your mommy loves you, Mikey. She loves you very, very much. When I was a kid, I was, well, I was mad at my parents for moving all the time, taking different jobs. It made things hard for me. But now that I'm older, I know that we're working hard because they love me. They wanted to be the best for me, and we're doing the best to get it. Life can be hard sometimes, just no one, no fun. But there's one thing that's already there, love. They love you. He shoots me a doubting look, one of those little doubting looks where they don't get outright call something a lie, but can't quite swallow it. Mikey, if your mom was sad, what would you do to make her happy? I mean, if you had to go to school for an extra two hours a day, would you do it? I guess. That's what she's doing. She's working very hard because she wants you to be happy. I'm not happy alone. I'm moving all the time. Neither is she, but she knows if she works hard one day, you won't be alone. You won't be moving all the time. She was the new kid, remember? But now I have a home. I was a new kid, remember? But now I have a home with my best friend and a good job. I worked in an arcade. How cool is that? It wasn't easy, but my parents were often sad. I was often sad. We pulled through, and so will you. And just remember, she loves you. You love her. That's got you through the sad times. Huh? 
It's not a great answer, but it doesn't solve the problem. But it doesn't make it, not, it makes things a little easier on Mikey. From his long sigh, I can feel him releasing his sadness before I have another sigh. Not a big goofy green, but a high, but not high, not the high of heaven. It's just a zip on. I love mommy. It's, it's it's sad a lot, but I know it's all it's not always sad. And even if she left me here, I know she's coming back. Hey, you know what? You still got some time to enjoy the party, even if you don't want to talk to their kids. There's a lot of games to play. And hey, maybe you'll get to know someone while playing a game. Our kids are great for that. I'm sure a lot of them have sad times too. And if they could get someone to play with them, someone who Thank understands. Thank you. Okay. I want to play the skee ball games. I'll spot you if you're talking. Let's get you rolling. I take his hand and lead him out of the back of the main room. Oh, god damn it, game. <laughs> I was not prepared for that. And off he goes. I'm not fooling myself. I know I haven't fixed all Mikey's problems. I know psycho child psychologist. And that wasn't entirely me flying by the seat of my pants. But for a moment there, I was able to help someone in the, some crappy situation I found myself long ago. 15 years ago, everything changed. No more family vacations. No more arcade visits. We couldn't afford them. They couldn't take time off work. The whole McFieldy family had to learn to settle, to accept a lot in life. We'd been dealt to simply go with the flow, never hoping, never wanting. Juniper did her best to pull me out of that mire. I only known her for a few years, one of those few stable times in my life, but she knew the edge I had been pushed to. Now, here I am. Today has been, well, bonkers. Apparently boring and hectic, surreal and way too real. But I can honestly say I'm more alive today than I have been in a very, very long time. Beep, beep. Beep, beep, Albert. Hmm? My emotional invoice and honestly is subverted combined with your body language is that you're, you're very happy right now. Yeah, yeah, I guess so, I am. How'd you know? I just told you, silly. I mean, how'd you know I love this job so much? Oh, oh, I know. Oh, that's easy. I didn't. What? I lied. I was 47% sure. Oh, it has an element you seem to click with your optimal social requirement. A fun atmosphere, spirited coworkers, helping people out, and so on. Also, I cross-referenced your roommate's postings talking about how much you enjoyed arcade visits when you were a kid. Still, 47%. 99.97%. But I was 99.97% set sure that if I said I was 97% 97 sure, you'd be willing to give it a try. Another thing thank, to thank Juniper for, I guess. Very weird to laugh. Hooray! You know? I try to be. Oh God, Gabe, you made me tear up. Huh? I was not prepared for that game. <laughs> when the car is pulling in the parking lot, it looks like the party's over. It's just about closing time from the arcade. Anyway, most of the gamers have filed out by now. If it hadn't already flooded the tidal wave of kitties, my first impulse was to go bug down about my paper. But eh, that can wait. I'd rather go help someone with the tidying up. Maybe start a VPI game. Now I turn around, about checking. You know. I want to go help Tao. Yeah. I'm gonna go help Tao. Tao boy. I mostly seen Tao bursting a groove on the Showtime stage, but currently he's chilling with some fire cast cars five. As I approach, he seems pretty relaxed. He's climbing back on the seat. No less dance Sunday night. Yeah, I've danced so much today that my legs are feeling like jelly. And jelly legs, man, I've got to rest those calves and try to my hand at some of the other games. Do you play fast cars five much then? Not really. In fact, I actually hate driving, but since I was over here earlier, I forgot I could give it a try. And how is it? It's okay, I guess. Okay. <laughs> it's not It's it's no Showtime stage, huh? I can tell you how it just, it just isn't the Fast Car 5 that isn't like the Showtime stage. Mm -hmm. Truth. But I gladly remove my heart from the stage so it can belong to you. Tio? Oh, my heart boy! I kid. I kid. But Fast Cars just doesn't make my blood pump like Showtime Stage does. There's so little movement in racing games. As you probably realize, dancing games differ vastly from racing games, and the communities surrounding them do too. Community? Yeah, all of us who enjoy the same game come together to play, talk, and appreciate each other's company. Our Showtime Stage group meets five times a week, and it's always a blast. They're dancing, funky beats, sweating. What more could you ask for? A towel? I always bring an extra or two for newcomers. You are a sweet boy! There are several gaming communities that frequent here. You'll meet them eventually. I'm happy to report that the Funplex has one of the biggest Showtime stage communities in the country. But don't you worry, we're a, rowdy, we're a rowdy bunch. Well, maybe a little rowdy. But if I need to settle down, just ask. I'll be your genie. Your wish is my command. Right now, all I wish is for a nice hot bath and a long trip. My favorite comfy chair, I'm food. Ha! You've earned a nice relaxing evening. From what I can tell, you worked your buns off. Thank you. I just hope the buns are still firmly attached. I don't know what I'd do if I lost my buns. I'm sure they'll show up behind you, but if you ever decide you need to shake those buns, you should join me upon the Showtime stage. Maybe one day, I'll hold you to that offer. Anyway, it's been real, but I need to consume food before I fall over. I'll catch you on the flip side. 
Shields jumps off the fast stage console and smiles to me as he wanders his way out of the complex. With the things wearing down, there's just one thing to do, take care before I'm out the door. I seek out Gavin to hand us the remainder of the day. Albert, good work today. Takes boss, mid boss, sub boss, Gavin will do. Hmm. I can't say you've been perfect employee, but my standards are impossibly high, so I just assume you were close to perfect as it is reasonable. The cost of cleaning our carpets won't be as bad, thanks to your quick thinking. Normally I'd have to deal with angry parents myself, but I was distracted. I've only second-hand accounts of your performance there, as Tio told me everything. Although Tio was on staff, I suppose he stepped up to handle that rude customer with a rational and calm attitude. So I'll consider that handled. I'm not pleased that you sold our Moopy for only $1,000, not 3000 as I requested. Gavin, we only paid 200 bucks for that game. I'd be ripping off a customer. A customer with exceptionally deep pockets. The one who squats on that game all day, spending all the handful of chain in the process. If anything, 3000 is what we needed to make up for the lost profit from Percy being so moopy obsessed. What's more, why is it still why it's still here is a good question. Was I not clear I wanted it gone? Percy didn't want to break up the family. That's their machines, not people. He also didn't want Naomi to be sad. Yes, well, Naomi needs to learn to let go, I'd say. Ahem! Are you giving our poor little Albert a hard time, Gavin, dear? Miss Francine, I thought you were napping. Let's be sensible. Naomi's dreams matter, too, as does their dreams of Percy, that poor fellow. Poor, isn't Percy saying great? Everyone Gavin, has a dream. Gavin, I know you mean well wanting to keep everyone's dreams afloat, but sacrifices made in the name which are sad our dreams of others. Well, that's not what the funplex is about. Albert, you understand, yes, the reason why, why I'm here. That's the question she asked me during the interview. Now I think about it, I understand. I came here today looking for hope. Hope I could do with more with my life comparison. Set up for what I can do, get, and go with the flow. Everybody I met today is full of hope. Gamers chasing scores, people following their passions. Nobody here is willing to give up their dreams. Not even you, Gavin. And you know we're better than this, Gavin. We don't settle. We chase our hopes and dreams and won't accept these less. I see. Apologies. Albert, Miss Francine, I apologize. It's difficult to balance my idealisms, my realisms, I guess my realism today, but I know in my heart I need to err I need to err on the side of idealism. Even my mind screams to protest. I can assume you could still keen to work here, Albert. I don't even hesitate before applying. Absolutely. Gavin fetches a nearby short stack of forms. Fill these out tonight, hand them in to me the first thing in the morning. And welcome to the fun flex. Welcome to the family, I'd say. I'm sure you'll fit in right in, Albert. Oh my god, I was not prepared for emotional storyline. One bus later day, and it's home again. Jiggity jig. Juniper already home from work, bounds over eagerly to know great lady. Hey, hey. So, how'd it go? It went well. Well, or well. Really well. Your little app came through, despite being terrifyingly omniscient and just being a little unnerving. You forgot to mention adorable. That's wonderful. I'm cool glad to hear that things worked out. And even came home with a smile, like when you were like our Huh. I guess I am smiling. By the way, there's just one teensy weensy little question I have for you. Why exactly did you order a giant crate full of pizza bagels? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, did I think that too much about parts of the terms and conditions? Oh, uh, both I know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow. Ah! <laughs> And that's level one of our crate spirits complete. Hey, look, you also won a prize. Level one, put your quarter up. You'll get one of those for each level you clear, plus some extras for various endings and other hidden things. So, let's see your score. M Mateo is definitely taking a liking to your dance fever. You're proving to be gentle, sweet, and compassionate. So, also you scored 650 points. Nice, keep talking to people and your score will go up. Today's pizza pack. Americans eat approximately 100 acres of pizza each day, or 350 slices per second. Wow! Do you want to see your game before proceeding to level 2? Yes. Yes, please. I'm going to put it right up. Yes, I'm going to overwrite that save. Done! Alright, guys. We're going to leave this episode of Arcade Spirits here. Arcade Spirits developers, you made me emotional. How dare you? Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk about works and everything down below. I'll leave a link to the game down there on Steam because this is a beautiful and amazing game. I recommend you guys buying it. I'll actually leave a link to their website so you can get it from itch.io or Steam. I'll leave Steam's link and then itch.io's link, so that kind of stuff. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to flick that bell icon for me and tap that beautiful subscribe button. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Curve